and welcome back to Supercoach Edge. It was a week of carnage again for those who owned the likes of Stuart and mm-hmm. Young, who both went down through injury, along with those owners of D'Ambrosio and or Sanders, who, of course, drew the short straw as sub-candidates. But on top of that, we yet again had the underperforming primos with the likes of Green, Steele, Marshall, Miller and Jackson among those that um, just didn't hit the mark. Mm. But we are thankful that it uh, was the best 18 week yet again considering that. But now, Liam, we're back to full 22 teams. So as Selby of Moriera's Magic likes to say on his podcast, it's the equivalent of the tide going out and we're left to see who is left stark naked as the water recedes. As now it's time where your entire team is exposed, deficiencies and all, with no best 18 to hide behind. Are you left starkers, Liam? I'm looking at my side and I'm not feeling <laughs> too comfortable. <laughs> Have you got ba- bathers on because the tide's going out? Fuck, I don't know. No, actually, you know what? I think I do. The issue is more so that uh, the tide's going out and I'm going with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, at least no, you won't be exposing yourself to anyone. Um, no, I'll just be drowned at, at, at just, the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, the tide's going out and I think my budgie smugglers are going with it. Um, so I'm just holding on ever so tightly oh. um, to make sure I'm not uh, done for indecent exposure. But uh, I, I do like that um, little analogy there from from Selby. It yes. always always it makes good. me laugh. <laughs> yeah, it is good. And I think just to your point, like just to show how many underperformers we actually had, especially with the uh, the primos or our you know usually reliable primos, yeah. we had the upcoming superstar and Harley Reid having to fly the flag for most of our sides. I mean, in fairness, he did score one forty seven. So did pretty well. So it wasn't wasn't a bad score. But the fact that, you know, we had to rely on him to really be the uh the ceiling score um mm. isn't great. And perhaps after all this, I think there's been a few people trading him out. Mm. He is looking more and more like he might actually be a keeper. Yeah, that's true. And I think we floated the question um a week or two ago about the potential for it. And I think I spoke about it in my, my team talk video just purely because I think that uh, I wanted to sort of conserve trades, but it's, yeah, it's looking more and more likely that um, he's sort of adjusting to senior level quicker than what we thought, especially Mm. those people, as you said, that traded him out, what, after his third game or before his third game. So um, yeah, they'd be kicking themselves and yeah, um, might be a bit of a blessing in disguise there uh, with the likes of him. Might be the savior for all of us in the fourth. I mean, he's now got up 186 Point six k, even up seventy five point two k on the weekend, Jesus. and his break even. And he sits at price three ninety three point nine k. His break even is now minus thirty. <laughs> what is thirty? So, Crikey. like he's projected his projection. If he scores ninety three, he goes up another fifty six k on the weekend. Wow! If he scores ninety three in the next two weeks, which is his just his average, so they're just projecting that forward because he's obviously a rookie. Um, he'll end up. In round eight at 485.1K. Wow. Uh, that's that's insane. That's one thing I've kind of learned across the journey is just to try and back in the rookies as long as possible. But again, it's so hard because even like this is the time of the year where you have to make that choice of yeah. cashing them in or do you persist in the hopes that they, you know, re energize their, their cash gen. Yeah. And I think to, a, to an extent, a guy like him, you knew he had the job security and you knew he was mm. going to get the opportunity as well. So I yeah. think backing in someone like him over potentially a Sanders or even a McKercher, McKercher's probably similar, has the role or has the opportunity in an underperforming side, but Sanders is probably the one that you would probably liken him to. But yeah, mm. definitely Harley Reid gone to the moon yet again, yeah. which is nice. You wouldn't to see. read about it. You wouldn't read um, about it, Liam, would you? And just like impact, he's like an Im- he's going to be like the perfect super coach player because it's an impact player. Yeah. Like looking at his stats from the weekend, like they were good. Don't get me wrong, mm. but like he only had nineteen disposals, three marks, two tackles. He kicks three goals, one, but like, and and doesn't reflect in those stats either. Like he took a nice hanger as well. Yeah, in kicking one of those goals. Exactly. Yeah, looking forward to um, holding him for as long as possible. Um, but we've seen that like with Dacos, um, a lot of people jumped off him yeah. and he ended up re-energizing his cash gen and then also his output as well. So, um, Same with Shees, I think. Yeah, Shees, yep, 100%. So uh, there's been a bit of a, a path that's been uh, laid 
out before uh, Reed uh, that other 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 players have traversed. So yes, that is true. Yeah, very very exciting. Yes, but anyway, before we do get stuck into it, um, if you aren't following us across our socials, we'll run through where you can find us and on YouTube. If you search Supercoach Edge, you will find us there and uh, make sure you subscribe so that you know when our content does drop from week to week so you can be the first to watch it, get the insider scoop. On Twitter, fire, you'll find us at, at Supercoach underscore Tom Edge, Brown. Damon at DamoJ88, myself at, at Liam Evans underscore 95, Facebook and Instagram, search Supercoach Edge and you'll find us there. But uh, yeah, get some tea, tea dollar brown insights from, uh, yeah, exactly. from us. I hope, is, I hope our it, insights are better than that. <laughs> I was going to say, like, surely the, the, the bars, uh, he's kind of below the bar. Um, uh, hopefully we, we for eclipse it. multiple reasons. Yeah, we've been so inspired. I think that the one thing that we're probably inspired by T. Dollar Brown is the tangents that we, we go off in. So, yes. like, we'd also be analyzing what is in the kebab of, you know, the kebab that's being eaten by one of the two people that's that uh, involved my first in a question. fracture. Yeah. If, if, if I had to go to the press conference, I would just skip all other questions and just be like, I need to know. Yeah. What? Sorry, not I need to know. I gots to know. I got to know. <laughs> <laughs> You've done it. You've done it. Oh, oh very good. Well, with that, uh, let's leave it there because you've, uh, yeah, again, you've set the bar mm-hmm. higher than uh, what T. Dollar Brown will. So, very, very nice. But uh, let's delve firstly into how we both performed for the round ever so briefly. So, I ended up scoring a 1,879 mm-hmm. below par. And with that, I uh, ended up sliding in rank for the first time and hopefully the last time this season. Uh, slid down at 1.8k spots to now sit 4,018th. Overall, um, the trades that I did do were Carroll to McAuliffe, went early on McAuliffe. Uh, also, you would have seen in my team talk last week, was more so as well to use him strategically if need be as a bit of a loophole because I had Sharp on the bench, didn't need to do it, thankfully. Uh, but then also it went McKercher to Graham from uh, mm-hmm. Gold Coast and then it brought in a handy upgrade in Sarong at the expense of Poor Colonel, the Colonel Sanders, whose fate was confirmed off the back of being the starting sub again. Cheers, Bev Dog. Uh, but uh, this this week, in short, I'll be bringing in another upgrade in the form of my boy Walshy. Yes, yeah, it's undeniable. I was at the game. I, was, I spoke in my team talk video. I was uh, at the game. Fortunate because it was entertaining, not just because the bag is won, but because I was on a Bucks. Uh, with one of uh, my mates that I used to work with at the Pies, um, actually, and uh, he's, he's a baggers man as well. And he had to be decked out in Giants gear. Um, absolutely hilarious. And uh, wore the helmet, full gear, um, mouth guard, had to wave the flag every time the Giants kicked a goal, uh, which was hilarious. And he had to do a bit of a, bit of a you know, stop and drop type thing behind the other uh, Giants bench as well, hoping to get him on the broadcast, but wasn't to be. But he was on the big screen at one stage, which was uh, quite funny. Um, but... Walshy at that game, undeniable. Pants off territory. I'd seen enough. Um, but yeah, him, he's coming in alongside another rookie in Garcia of the Hugo variety, because there are two, of course. As usual, if you haven't already seen my Tim Talk episode that I just spoke of, be sure to jump in and check that out for a more comprehensive look into my strategy discussing the trades I'm making and reviewing my team in a, a bit more depth. And these are eps, of course, drop every Monday to wet your whistle ahead of our weekly eps. So make sure you just subscribe on YouTube to get notified of when it drops. Liam, how did you fare? Yes, not well. Seems mm. to be. I just need to record myself. Arms so and arms. Seventeen ninety six was my final score. And just sorry, I've actually just been playing around my side, so I need to just undo my changes so that I can remember what who was in my side before this. Just, just, just with that, can we create an AI of you being oh, like, please, "How did just... your team go?" Oh, not, not good. <laughs> I mean, you can just use any insert any from the, the last six episodes, but anyway, oh, I swear that. to God. I swear. It'll turn the title turn and Liam. This t- is it. This is no, the no, week. I'm literally I'm going to support it. <laughs> I've been a supporter. I'm not only going out to see a shark has eaten my legs, dragged me out, and I'm just flailing about. You're a virtual human chicken nugget. Yeah, pretty much. At this stage, (laughs) Um, I don't even know where to start. I VC Jack Steele for his 84. Okay, that sucks. So who do I put the C on? 
of course, Tom Green, who, who somehow underwhelms even more than Jack Steele's 84 with an 82. <laughs> Once I saw that, I was like, yeah, whatever. My, my season, not my season, my, well, my season's well and truly done, but my, uh, my week is done. I mean, I've got Tom Stewart, 62. I mean, obviously injured. I've got, Mm. Uh, Wanganine Malira's 69. Ding, ding. Hey, ding, ding. Um, Tom Power, 73. Not great. Ollie Dempsey's 53. That really probably hurt me was Tom Green. If I had not, if I'd been able to get a decent captain, I would have been, you know, not, not too disappointed. Not happy, mm. but not too disappointed. <laughs> anyway, onto my ranking. It was 81,323 and it was a dive. 3.5K dive deeper than a... Uh, Good old Sammy Draper there. Um, <laughs> I'm falling. I'm falling. In slow motion. It's like five minutes later. Mess- I, I message yeah. you after that game being like, you can actually see the cogs in his head turning as he goes, <laughs> maybe if I just do this slow. Yeah, it'll no one will notice. Okay. Yeah, it'll look like an accident where really it'd probably be the opposite. Uh, like, you know, lose your footing, act as if you've been pushed into yeah. the ball onto the ground. Like, Oh Seriously. my god! And then he was like taking the piss after the game as well, which was even funnier when like he was over there with the crowd and stuff and walking with a couple of his teammates, and he's just like, "I'll do it again onto my knees onto the ground, <laughs> like a like a tree that's be- that's been chopped down, <laughs> just slowly." Timber. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't know what goes through that man's head, no. but anyway, uh, in terms of trades, I did trade out McKercher and James Jordan. I didn't trade out Sanders, not necessarily. I just kind of didn't have the ability to at the time. I was busy on Thursday night at the time that, uh, so it just made it a bit awkward. But anyway, that is what it is. Uh, And then I did trade in uh, Will Graham and I went early on Biggie Nguyen. So that was, that was that. Does leave me with 636.1K in the bank. So I have- Yes, <laughs> and you have opportunity to upgrade. Well, like, well, you were talking about you being swept out to sea. That's your, I was going to say, like, you know. The, By a helicopter? Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. You are, you. are There's a helicopter hovering above water to Taylor pull Swift you screaming, out. Uh, <laughs> I can get a private jet out to me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't tweet about it, though, because uh, you'll be done oh, yeah, for, it. you know, um, carbon emissions, everything else. That is it. Um. So, yes, but, that's... Uh, that's sitting there in the bank, ready for me to, ready mm. for me to spend. Uh, who I got my eye on? Got my eye on Sam Walsh. Mm. Maybe mm. a Jordan Dawson, but I think we're going to talk about mm. some guys. So maybe I might mm. change my mind as we uh, go into the uh, trading options this week. Anyway, on to our head-to-head, and I'm sure it comes as no surprise, Damon. You are on six wins to my zero. I am zero and six, and there's almost a thousand point differential. Coming up minus nine hundred and seventy four, so I will be yeah fighting to to do something to come back. This will be the comeback of the century. <clears throat> it's like you're at the back of the pack on the Flemington Strait. We're about to right to around Bradbury. the bend. <clears throat> yeah, exactly right. And it could happen. Injuries mm. happen. All that sort of stuff. Knock on board that it doesn't. But no, I hope it doesn't. It's a long season, Liam. It so is a long season. I have no doubt you will make your way back. But uh, let's now jump into our first segment, our regular segment, of course, with the good, the bad, and the ugly. So kicking things off with the good and uh, a bit of a surprise name here, um, but recaptured a bit of his old form, Jordan Mm. Dawson. So he posted a whopping 168 and was absolutely massive and a massive, massive turnaround for him in his scoring and form overall. Before that, he hadn't managed to turn up actually. <laughs> so yeah, massive, massive um, turnaround. And what a bounce back, Liam. A much deserved a bounce back to those people, those that owners held. that held and kept the faith. Incredible. But honorable mention, can't go without mentioning this guy. Wouldn't read about it, but you would read about it. It's Harley Reid with his huge score of 147. Absolutely insane from the young gun. It was absolutely insane. What what a what a game from him. But anyway, mm. on to our bad, and it is Tommy Stewart. He did end his night subbed out against the Lions on 62 after suffering a concussion, which does have that double, I guess, effect. That means he will be missing next week too. Mid-season DPP can't come quick enough so that we can cover here for him this week with just the lack of defensive rookies um, on offer, making it hard to fool the bench. 
Yeah, it's uh, a bit of fortunate. The Supercoach guys have looked after us. Um, if they did, well, if it was just a coincidence. But um, yeah, we uh, we both <clears throat> are thanking our lucky stars. Uh, in the ugly, though, we have Tom Green. He's looking rather green uh, because you look at his stats line and his score was probably a bit low when you look at it because he had 30 disposals at 70% disposal efficiency and 430 metres gained. But he did have three frees against and had a look earlier, nine direct clangers. Mm -hmm. So he's almost okay, caught yeah. the, um, uh, the disease, you could say, or the illness that Martin had, that Young yes. had, where mm. they were still actually scoring, getting their hands on the ball, but not disposing of it well enough. So, you know, look at those guys. They turned it around. So I reckon Tom Green can do so as well. Tom but, Green's turned around. Yeah. He's got all the makings for it. We know what he can produce. Yeah. But in this case, his scoring has absolutely dried up after bursting out of the gates in his first few games. So hold the faith and he will turn things around. But for those non-owners, they're going to pick him up for an absolute bargain, much like Tom Stewart. And it's bloody annoying. It is. It is very annoying. Now let's move on to round seven. It's on the horizon. So let's jump mm. into trade talk with The Price is Right. Show me the money. The price is wrong, bitch. For those tuning in for the first time, The Price is Right is the segment where we discuss potential trades and targets from week to week. And uh, sometimes we even discuss whether a specific player should even be traded at all. But before we do delve into who to target and who to punt, we do have some new DPPs, Damon. Among those, most do you want to run through them, the mid-defenders? Yes. Well, we uh, have, of course, no surprise, but it's a big saviour of ours, Nick Martin, mm -hmm. alongside Hayden Young, who unfortunately went down with uh, what they're calling hammy awareness. But again, DPP might be able to swing him around and uh, cover him for at least a week if he's only out for that. But who yeah. knows? He might have actually played this week. Uh, we also have Sam at Closey, uh, the Hills Hoist, um, absolute gun, Massimo D'Ambrosio, Colby McKercher, Riley Bonner, and the guy who has swept all for him, Matt Roberts, uh, mm. DPP. So all those guys coming in handy 100%. What about the uh, mid forwards, Liam? Yep. In terms of mid forwards, we do have Finn McRae, probably not super relevant now, but could be as the season goes on if he does get some real opportunity in the middle for the Pies. Uh, Ollie Dempsey. Uh, Tom Powell, Isaac Heaney, your absolute mm. uh, burn man reformed. Mm. Uh, he gets mid forward eligibility and Riley Sanders as well. Thanks. You know what? I'm actually going to say thank you to mm. Bevo because the mm. fact that he was sub meant that he maintained a low enough forward average. Sorry, low enough mid average that he could uh, time, you know, time in the midfield that he could get that mid forward eligibility. Not that mm. it really matters for people because he's probably owned by about, uh, oh no, still 59% of teams, 59% still own him. Mm. Bit of a slap he in the face down. a little bit fish. But mm. uh, yeah, at least you still, at least still can use him as a forward, I guess. Uh, moving on to the defender forwards, Damon. Uh, yes, we have uh, Alex Sexton for anyone that still has him. Don't know if he's going to come back, but is what it is might help you in terms of some DPP yes. flexibility when you're uh, when you're trading. Um, Charlie Combin, Zach Fisher, and Buku Kamas. So a few names there that uh, might come in handy. Probably more so for trading than anything. But um, yeah. mm -hmm. that is that. So let's delve into our categories now. For going going gone is the first one up, and we spoke of him just then. Riley Sanders. He's priced at two ninety four point four k as now a mid forward with a break even of 107. So it is bittersweet news that he does have that mid forward DPP heading yeah. into round seven. And the young dog has had his cash generation absolutely destroyed by Bevo as he started as a sub ending with a score of just 15 on the weekend. The one positive is that Bevo doesn't actually tend to like to use the same sub two weeks in a row. So he should be safe, but who knows? I mean, we can't really pick anything. When we do think of something where we're like, we finally crack the code. He just switches it around. Mm. Uh, has dropped 15.7K in cash on the weekend with a sizable break even now of that 107, meaning he'll only drop further. So it's probably time to move him on. Agreed entirely. If you own him, hunt him. Next up, we've got Ollie Dempsey, mid forward eligible, 306.6K, break even of 66. First up, Dempsey is another who has been given that mid forward DPP in the new round of incoming DPP changes. If you did start him, or he brought him in before his first price change. Uh, Dempsey has made you over 158.2K in cash. 
So you can certainly move him on to a Biggie Nguyen or a Garcia and bank that cash. Could also potentially hold him another few weeks. Given his knack of spike games, he might be able to kick start his cash gen once more. But it does look, does look like he's basically maxed out in cash gen. Can put in a spike game though, so could you know could eke out a bit more cash, but equally, um, I don't think it's going to be a huge amount. Yeah, exactly right. And like, I guess the the pleasing thing is that you know if you want to hold on to him, uh, there probably is merit. Like the break even is still below his average at the moment. So mm. you know, the is that in combination with those spike games that he has had across the journey? Yeah, I think he's probably playing a bit more half forward as opposed to sort of that wing that he's been yeah. doing in recent times. So might be matchup dependent. Who knows? But um, yeah, it's kind of a risk you'd need to uh, need to take. Uh, let's move on to the next guy in Jack Carroll, um, who is in the team that he's actually facing this week in Carlton. Midfielder, priced at 233K is the break even now of 81. So we spoke about him last week, but if you've still got him, you've got to move him on. Has been the sub for the last two weeks and halted his cash gen, decreasing by 9.3K on the weekend. So it's time to cash him out. With Walsh back in, it doesn't really look like he has a solid role on the side. And with Chera to still return, he could find himself even on the outer. I like him now as being a baggers man. Storied about it. It became a bit of an ongoing gag um, where I'd take the piss out of Vossi for putting Paddy Dow as a sub. And it looks as though Carroll is the new Paddy Dow for Ooh. Carlton, unfortunately, and um, back to being more so of a depth option. Agreed entirely. Um, move him on if you've got him. Now let's move on to the chopping block. And these are guys that, you know, could trade, could hold. Um, probably Dempsey could have fit here, but... First up, we do have Zach Williams, defender eligible, 327.3K. So obviously watch the injury reports. I don't know whether there's been any more movement here, Damon, as a baggers no, man, but did finish the game on the bench with a knock to his Achilles. Considering his injury history, he may be put on ice, you know, for a week, even if it is like not an issue or not a major issue. His break even is 62. It's still achievable. So I'd be watching his injury status, seeing if he's named and consider whether he might actually be worth holding for another week, although he has made you 11, 111.2K, sorry, so you could take it and cash him in this week if uh, if it suits you now. Yep, yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's still wait to hear as to what the uh, diagnosis is with him, mm. but uh, considering that he was out with that calf injury uh, for a little while or for a fair while anyway um, in recent times, um, obviously Achilles linked with the calf. So I reckon they might be conservative with him um, at minimum. So if he does play, I reckon he might even be a sub out candidate um, or at least he's highly rotated through the uh, the bench. So I think at this stage, I'd be looking to move him on. Um, and yeah, he's kind of made enough cash uh, that we're looking for him to make anyway. Mm, I think it's justifiable now. Yeah. Made what 111.2K. So kind of makes a bit of sense for him to... Yeah, to, to cash him out and, and uh, use him as a stepping stone to uh, a genuine primo, especially now uh, with the DPP changes. Uh, you could swing someone like a Nick Martin or a uh, Matt Roberts back into defense and then use him mm. uh, in that trade swing to upgrade to a genuine mid primo, which is something that I'm looking at doing with Le Walshi. Yeah, that sounds Let's good. move on to Massimo D'Ambrosio. So uh, he, of course, got the uh, DPP status as well as mid defender, priced at 348.2K. Was subbed out, unfortunately, in the Hawks' big win for a score of 60, which did limit some of his cash gens. Thankfully, it actually went up because I think he finished the game on 55. Champion data did us a solid and just pushed him up to 60. Um, his break even is still achievable at 45, though the time to cash out is nigh unless he has a nice big ceiling game. I'm kind of in the camp of potentially holding him. Yeah, uh, I think just he can hold another week. With Stewart being out, I uh, kind of need a bit of a warm body there. Uh, mm. And I think with his scoring, he has been able to bust out some okay scores um, and even scores that are double what his current break even is. So um, still could make us a little bit of cash before we punt him potentially next week. Yeah, I think that's totally fair, but just one to yeah, watch uh, again this week. Let's move on to the get him in. And Damon, I'm actually going to throw this one straight to you. Well, that's, I'm glad you did that because the pants are already off. I am ready. <laughs> I am ready. So it is, of course, Sammy Walsh, priced at 576.8K with a break-even of 59. 
He's absolutely flying in his return from injury with scores of 166 mm. and a 130 on the weekend. Carlton's fixture isn't the easiest in the next four to five matches, but he does have favorable averages against those that he faces in Collingwood and the Swans, which is 116 and 117, and has scored 158 and 126 in his previous two against the Cats who he faces this weekend. We spoke about him last week, so I won't really go into too much detail, but he's priced at an average of around 103, and he's currently averaging 148. And of course, that's from two matches, so it's a small sample size, but it's a sort of scoring and performance that is eerily similar to the form he was in across the final series last year mm. when he was given the, uh, the Gary Ayers medal for the best performer across the final. So um, hasn't missed a beat, which is surprising considering he was a bit of a layoff from a back injury. So uh, I've said enough anyway, uh, opted to hold off for another week and was happy enough to do so. 100% uh, now confident that he is fit and he's absolutely flying, of course. So that plus the fact that getting him is another bonus of him potentially being a captaincy option, Mm. which of course, as I said, could be as soon as this week or a VC option uh, mm. given his recent scores against the Cats. So I'm firmly on board. Uh, I am at the front of the bus tooting the horn, asking people to jump on. Liam, are you tempted? I, my plan was always to bring him in. Oh, there you go. You're in. So I'm, You're alongside me. I'm driving the bus. I'm hanging – meanwhile, hanging out, just like, get in, get in tooting <laughs> yeah, the horn. Exactly. <laughs> Don't make me tap the sign, Damon. Don't make me tap the sign. (laughs) Then where the heck am I? Don't make me tap the sign. But I'm lost and I need to know where. (laughs) Very good. Very Uh, good. (laughs) Moving on to the next guy. It is Jordan Dawson. 533.6K. Woof. Break even of 73. And we saw the shades. Absolute shades of the old Jordan Dawson. And while we won't pick him up, unfortunately, for a sub 500K, as we had hoped. We will still get him at a 114K discount on his starting price. Ooh. Will be a value option, so could be handy as a you know M8, M9 as the season progresses, as he does have a high ceiling, which we saw on the weekend with a score of 168. The absence of Crouch no doubt had a favorable effect on Dawson getting more CBAs, up from 59%, 48% to 80% but he also used the ball much more effectively. Has a great run coming up facing Northport with the Eagles, Hawthorne, times two and Richmond to come as well. So Jordan Dawson is a definite option for those that can afford him. Do you like it? I'm a little bit worried about the Crouch effect. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of a sample size of really one uh, with Crouch being out. So I don't know. I mean, we could probably look back at last year um, and have a look to see if there was any real correlation, but I just think the big comparison I see, apart from extra CBAs for Dawson, is he was actually playing a bit more in defense mm. um, as opposed to being camped up forward. So, you know, obviously where he used to play before he was in, in the engine room and uh, could play his trade a bit more effectively. So don't mind him as an option. Um, for me, I think he presents as a little bit of a risk, but good ped- pedigree, as we know. So um, considering the what 114K discount, that we're getting on him. Um, yeah, he's one of the uh, cut price options for the season thus far. Let's move on now to the next guy in Shea Bolton. He's priced at 556.9K with a break even of 56. Are you laughing there, Liam, because of the uh, I'm that you point? have to. No, uh, no, I'm just laughing at the oh. fact that you have to you have to talk about Shea Bolton. Oh, I thought you were making reference to an obscure That is also reference. great. I'm there for yes. you. <laughs> but yes, Shea Bolton, I... I do think that we will need him at some stage, such as the dieness. I don't even yeah. know if it's a word, but uh, of the forward line, we might need to call upon this guy. So Bolton may be known as one of our burn men, collective burn men, Liam, not just me, but you also, but could be a handy option for our forward line this week and now has three tons in his last three matches, 119, 133, and 129. And he's been getting CBAs this season though it doesn't really correlate to his increased scoring. In rounds three, four, and five, we saw an increase in his scoring. Uh, He actually had then 56%, 33%, and 57%. But it does show that he is around the ball, giving him opportunity to score well at least. So with Bolton, he is sitting as the seventh best forward based on average. And um, all signs indicate that uh, maybe he is going to finish as a top six forward. The question is whether you can get him cheaper later in the season given his history of up and down scoring. I'm tempted. <laughs> You're tempted. 
I mean, I'm just kind of of the opinion we're going to have to get him in eventually. Yeah. And I just feel like if he goes on a run, I want to get him in before he goes nuts. Goes absolutely I mean, bunana. Yeah. Like, I mean, you just know how he goes on those sort of runs. But also, I don't know. It's shape option. Yeah. I don't know whether he's going to be more expensive than this. Or- I mean, his break even's 56, so he probably is going to be more expensive than this. But I think, look, I'm going to be honest. I think at this stage of the season, I would almost be wanting to fill our mids and our defenders first. I think yes. that's where the bulks of the bulks, that's where the bulk of the scoring is coming from. Mm. Um, the forwards, like, I mean, I know we're relying potentially on a Tom Powell, a Sam Darcy, a Cadman, uh, a Dempsey at this stage, who are scoring, you know, 60s, 53s, 49s, not great, 73s. But I just think if you're upgrading, you want to be upgrading your full, uh, your mids and your defenders because they're, that's where you're getting the bulk of the points. Mm. Like that's where I feel like we're getting the reliable scorers. Like right now, so the top forwards read like this. you got, t- based on total points, you got Isaac Heaney, Sam Flanders, who we'd both expect, Dane Zorko. Yeah, okay. Kind of playing that backline role. Luke mm. Jackson, Harry Mackay, Jesse Hogan, yeah. Shay Bolton, Charlie Kerno. And my personal favorite, Jake Waterman. He's Jake the ninth, Waterman. ninth best scoring forward. In 0.4% of teams in the competition. <laughs> Absolute bargain though, 464K. Jesus. He's actually gone up 95K over his past two weeks, having scored a 176 and a 107 on the weekend. And like, I think people need to be mindful yeah. of the fact that don't please don't trade him in. No, um, please don't. Because looking at his, like before that, he had a 91. That's not too bad, but the rest have been 73, 62, and 54. So, Mm. yeah, I don't think, yeah, anyway. But I think that's the point that I'm looking at here with these guys. I just don't think you're losing points based off that. The, you know what I mean? The, like, yeah, the, the the point I think you're making as well, and like it's a it's a very um, uh, important one as well. Is and I think we spoke about this <clears throat> even coming to the season. Is that there was like no clear top six forward apart no. from potentially Heaney or Flanders. Like Flanders was, was before the, Heaney break yeah. out of the box. We're talking about Flanders. He was like the yeah. only one, and then we're talking about McRae and Jackson who, potentially. Yeah, and Jackson, yeah. and this kind of you know six rounds into the season. Uh, highlights that even further. Like it's so up in the air apart from the fact that it's probably become a little bit clearer with maybe two extra plays and the fact that uh, Heaney is definitely locked in. Zorko now, provided he doesn't bloody get injured again like he always does. And then Jackson, who we spoke of. So we've still got, you know, the fifth and sixth spot open. But even so, we don't know if Jackson's going to sustain his scoring because now with Darcy back, it's kind of fallen away a bit mm. and so on and so forth. So um, you know, maybe the th- top three are locked in with Heaney, Flanders, and Zorko, but beyond mm. that, we just don't know. So I'd much prefer to wait to see when the smoke clears as to, you know, who's still left standing um, as the top scoring. Because I'd hate to get in someone like a, a Shea Bolton and then he goes back and regresses back to his usual yo-yo scoring and then that scuttles you and yeah, you're stuffed. So like even Tom Powell, we spoke of a few weeks ago, like, Got him in with the notion that he may be a top six forward. Still looks like he might be, um, but is being pushed down the list um, due to like breakout games from Waterman and the like. Jesse Hogan as well, um, Mackay. Like, I don't think we've had key forwards lining the top ten as much as what we have. At not the like that. Not like yeah. that. And probably not for this long. Mm. Like to be, and that's based off. That's not based off average. That's based off total points. Yep. Like we're not talking about, you know what I mean? Like an average mm. can sort of skew it um, upwards for them. But mm. yeah. Yeah. I just think that you're, you're going to get more points overall, probably from your defenders and your midfielders. Yep. And that's where I'd be looking to try and find the value at this stage of the season. Like that's where you're going to back yourself or, you know, raise yourself higher in the, in the, in the overall scheme of things. Now, speaking of forwards, let's talk about some more. Jack mm. McRae, 480K. I'll be just, sorry, just after we've said don't go for forwards, we're going to start talking about some forwards to trade in. Uh, mid forward eligible, 64 break even. Obviously, when we say don't trade them in, it's just more so try and pick the ones that feel a bit more sure. Yeah, um, secure. Mm. Yeah. And I think this is the thing. Jack McRae, I think, could be one of those 
just because, yeah. and I think at the price you're going to pick him up at 480k, it's a bit of a difference to talking about a Shea Bolton who's, you know, what, 70k more expensive? Mm. Yep. 75k, yeah. So 76, so almost 77. Uh, so Jack McRae, 480k, mid forward eligible, break even of 64. It was the scoring that we we did see it the scoring that we used to expect from McRae with a 123 mm. on the weekend. It was like his just normal, his average score was 123. Yeah. I feel uh, does mean that in his last two games when he wasn't the sub, he's going an average of 105, which, you know, you'd expect to see him certainly finish as a top six forward if he can manage, uh, you know, from this stage of the season, if he can uh, maintain that. CBAs are still pretty low, which is not great for him going at 48%. 13% in your sub game, 29% and 34%. So the role isn't great as I guess as a midfielder um, or as a CBA mid. We do have to take note that while Libba did miss, it does look as though the bulk of his CBAs went to Ed Richards because of course they did, who has of recorded course, zero for the season before his week, before this weekend when he went at 76% CBAs. Make it make sense. There's no way. There is no way to make it make sense. Anyway, oh, wait, Bev is the coach. That makes sense. Like, <laughs> so I don't think we haven't seen like the, the extra 5% that he got on the weekend. I yeah. don't think a really, you know, I think it's within sort of that margin that we'll see him having. Um, he is cheap though at 480k and should be able to finish the top eight forward. I'd expect though, obviously the Bevo factor does still remain. So who knows? He could be running around the VFL in two weeks, racking yeah. up 70 disposals. Exactly right. And uh, I, I just just with McRae as well, like I think we spoke about it last year when he was an option um, and even in the preseason this year where the one correlation I think we could find was whenever McRae had less than 50% CBAs, his average dipped, which mm. if you highlight, go on to DFS Australia, check out CBAs for him this year as well as last year. Obviously, you know, discounting those games where he was the um, starting sub in round four and also round 23 last year when he was subbed out. Uh, he actually averaged in those games where he was less than 50% CBAs and 88.5, which I think is probably around about the mark of what he will, I think, average mm. um, for this season, which, you know, taking into account of what top six forwards, you know, have to average in order to get into that bracket. I think 88.5 probably is around about that mark. So like you said, end. yeah, yeah, could be uh top eight, I'd say almost. Yeah, yeah. top eight um, with potentially spike games as well, which- Well, that's it. You know, we saw on the weekend potentially, you know, as one of the spike games for um for McRae. And that's it compared to the likes of a uh, uh, Jake Waterman. I think uh, McRae <laughs> is a much better option. No, nah, he's, uh, he's someone to consider and I can totally understand considering that he's- you know, as cheap as he is, um, kind of makes a bit of sense. Um, and it's probably it might might be the uh, the only time we see him this cheap. That's the thing. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's something to really think about. Yeah. And like we said, you know, yeah, it's not not a priority. But I mean, he's he's down seventy eight point four k on his starting price now yeah. after having gone down sixteen point seven k. So with a break even of sixty four, chances are he's going to be on the way back up. Yeah, and I think. When we talk about McRae, we need to stop thinking of him as the old mm. Jack McRae. Like I think yep. we we weigh him up based off what we knew of him. I yes, think if yep. you if you looked at his numbers in terms of average in the last couple of weeks, you'd be okay with it as a top as as a forward option. Mm. So I think there's a degree of that take away who it is. I think you have spike games. I don't mind him as a pickup as an option to pick up this week if you yep. are in need of a forward. Yep, exactly right. Don't mind it. Well, let's move on to another option. And it's probably one that's a little bit less secure in Taylor Adams. Mm. His price a little bit cheaper though at 437.2K with a break even of 66. So he returned from injury and has looked great playing the Eagles in a return match 497 and an 87 against the Suns. He had 21% CBAs against the Eagles, taking away some of Papley and Heaney CBAs. Mm. Priced at 437.2K, as I said, could be a bit of a risky pick for a top six forward from this stage of the season. And more than likely, probably more of an outside chance at this stage, mm -hmm. more on the line of, you know, top 10 thereabouts. Mm -hmm. um, but the real concern, I think, is his body, first and foremost. Can he hold up for the rem remainder of the season? I think he actually went off 
on the weekend with a bit of an ailment, but came back on again. So that's a bit of a enough to suggest mm -hmm. that it should be given people the heebie-jeebies to be like, okay, I don't think I'll be investing that amount of money in a guy that could get injured so easily. We know he got injured over the preseason. Um, so I think given that, I think he's too much of a risk for his price, considering that we still have, you know, Parker to return, who's going to steal CBAs, no doubt. And of course, Henny's in there as the main man uh, alongside Warner and the like. So for me, he's a bit of a pass. But I mean, if you're strapped for cash, you need an option and you like to live dangerously, he could be an option. Mm. I mean, he's 30 years old, 20, 31 this year. Mm. So like he's yep. the wrong side of it for a super coach, you know, relevance player. Um, yep. I think he'll score well enough. I think he'll have decent games. I think he's a bit like a McRae. Yeah. But I think McRae will have better scoring. It's just this, it's the, I think whereas McRae's got the Bevo factor, Adams has the injury factor. Yeah, exactly. Um, They're one so of the same, really. Yeah. <laughs> and like at 437, if he was 100K cheaper, like four, uh, sorry, 337, I'd be like, yeah, jump on yeah. him. You might at least make 100K if yeah. he doesn't finish. You know, he might be one of those players like a Tom. Like a Nat Five. Yeah, a Nat Five or even a Tom Powell where he might mm. finish as a top six forward. But at least if he he should make you some cash along the way, but yep. he's just not going to make you at four thirty seven k to get a hundred k out of him. I mean, you could do it, but I just think it's a bit more risky. Yeah, yeah. and he was it was actually subbed in his first game as well. Um, keep that in mind. So, despite the fact that he just scored ninety seven, played well, he was managed, and then of course in the other uh, game of the weekend was off for a fair while. Only had sixty seven percent time on ground. So his points per minute actually really good um, at 1.28 in his first mm. game and then 1.05 in his second. Um, by and large, he's playing more, again, similar to what he was playing at the Pies. 41% CBAs on the weekend, a bit of an uptick on what he actually had in his first game, which is 21%. But I think we'll see that even, you know, regress even more when Parker returns as well. So he's probably rotating more so through the middle. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, someone that is a definite risk, but up to you if you want to take it. To you if you want to take it. That's <laughs> it. Uh, let's move on to the next guy. And interesting choice here, Jai Caldwell. Uh, 479.1K, break even of 62. Interesting choice here because he does offer a nice pod option for you with his mm. new DPP status is now mid forward. Uh, and obviously, as we've discussed, forwards, very interesting this year. Yes. So he is currently in 1% of teams, but is it actually 0.7%? Wow. Uh, so nice Uber pod for you. Uh, obviously with Setters and Perko out of the side due to injury, it's really allowed Caldwell the opportunity to impact in the middle with a score of 129 on the weekend following scores of 83 and 99 and 99 the week before that against St. Kilda. Uh, and that was with um, Perkins in the side. I can't remember when Setterfield went down. I think it might have been that game too. Yeah. Can't remember now. But in those games, he had 46% CBAs, 61% and 64%, which has seen an increase in his disposal numbers as well, topping 24, 23 and 26. It's a bit of an interesting option for those who do like to look at pods, though extremely risky as you expect that as Setters and Perkins do return, we'll see a decrease in his CBAs like in the first three rounds of the season where he had just 13%, 17% and 9%. I think we'll see an increase on that. Like I don't think he'll go down to as low as that. I think he'll sit maybe hopefully, it's probably hope, wishful thinking, maybe around the 30% <laughs> at the least. Um, setters, I'm not sure on whether he definitely comes back in. Perkins definitely does. Just because I'm wondering whether they see Durham as a defensive enough mm. mid that they don't need setters as well. I think they're going to try and balance the midfield mix a bit more. Uh, yep. I think Merritt said that he's Merritt and Par Merritt said that he and Parrish are probably more likely to play a little bit more forward to and decrease their CBAs to allow the likes of a you know Durham uh, Caldwell Hobbs probably as well. Um, a bit more time in the middle. So I think it's not necessarily negative, but I just don't know whether he'll be able to maintain it. I think he'll still have, I mean, what did he do in season 2023? Came out averaging 78.2. Yeah, it's tough. It, honestly, it's a tough one. Um, I don't mind it. I'd probably want to see another week or so 
and then see what happens when Perkins is back. I reckon Perkins will be back uh, potentially not not again not on, not on Anzac Day. From what I heard, he trained with the group mostly today, um, and then went and did his own thing in the rehab group. Uh, so I'd say he'd probably be back maybe next week at the earliest. Gotcha. Well, it's interesting as well that uh, in the one game where all of those guys have played, so Setterfield, Perkins, Durham, and Caldwell, which was back in round one, Setterfield had 74%, Perkins 87%, but that's since dropped every single game that he's played. Uh, and then Durham actually had 45% in that game and Caldwell mm. 13%. But like you say, Durham is is interesting because he's had 45, 17, 48, 75, and 68. So he's actually increased. And mm. I think you're right because he's been performing quite well. And it's that that pressure that he applies around the ball as well, much needed, and provides a bit of difference, I think, in the midfield there compared to someone like a Parrish. Um, so, yeah, what you're saying there kind of lines up. And, yeah, when the dust settles, you'd like to see Caldwell there because he's been – Flying his trade for quite a while, hasn't he? Waiting patiently to get his his fair crack in the engine room. Um, and I think there's going to be some stage where he actually steps up and fulfills sort of the expectations mm. that he had as a high draft pick when he was at the Giants. So um, I am keeping one, one eye on him. It's one of those, I, yeah. I wouldn't trade him in this week. No. But it's one to watch. Mm. Yeah. Because with the way the forwards are this year, he could be one that could go go off. Um, not probably the same level as a, definitely not the same level as a, you know, Flanders or a mm. um, Heaney, but just yep. someone that could sort of average that little bit higher um, just because they're in that midfield role. Yeah. All about the role, isn't it? Yeah. 100%. Well, uh, let's round things out with uh, an old favourite, Nicky Dacos. Everyone knows, who's he, yes. knows who he is. What he's capable of. He's priced at 577.3K with a break even now of 95. So if you're one of the 28% of super coaches without day costs, it's time to bring him in. Or for those people that uh, potentially dropped him mm. in the hope of picking him up at a bit of a discount, well done to you. You can do so because he's dropped 72K on his starting price. So he's now ripe for the picking. Simple as that. Get him in. Um, he's going to be a top, probably three, top two scoring defender. Um, so... Get him in at this this price. He is an absolute bargain. Um, yeah, and just shows that people like us were willing to to pay up uh, to start him in our teams uh, at that inflated price point. So yeah, you haven't got him. Get him in. Yep, that's it. Moving on to the consider and wait options, and this week we have Riley Garcia forward eligible, one hundred and twenty five point two k for the doggies. Uh, he won't be on the bubble until at least next week. And Garcia managed a career high score against the Saints of 82. Has been in the system since 2020, so it was a more mature body than you know might expect for a player priced at 125.2k. Pleasingly, yeah. though, he did have 21% CBAs on the weekend, so he could have a bit of a role that might be super coach friendly in terms of CBAs. But do keep in mind that both Liver and Sanders missed. Obviously, Liver missed and Sanders did play, but only as a sub. Um, and Sanders had zero CBAs. So wow. even when he came on, he didn't get any CBAs because Punished. Bevo. <laughs> get old Bev dog. Um, let's have a look. Sorry, just having a quick look. Yeah, and that's probably the main difference. Ingl uh, sorry, Bont went about the same as he normally does. Liber obviously missed, but that was all taken up by Ed Richards. Trelaw had about his same average in the last recent weeks. McRae, slight increase, but nothing real major. Sanders went from 21% last week to zero, and Riley Garcia went to 21% this week, while Sanders had zero. So it's really going to be, I think, between those two and whether whether Bevo is trying to teach Sanders a lesson um, or not. Let's see. Uh, but, yeah, I don't go on him early. I don't think he's worth that mm. risk, um, especially with Bevo as his coach. Um, I've seen a few people going for him not 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 hugo yeah don't get riley. them mixed up yes yeah. don't get them mixed up go for hugo don't go for for riley at this stage go for hugo <laughs> have a red hot go with hugo uh classic but yeah garcia as well like as you said he's got a bit of the system this is his fourth season mm. and uh been in and out of the side really hasn't had much of a much of a, a chop but um CBA percentage, uh, this is the only time that he's actually been given CBAs. Uh, mm. Every single other game that he's played, uh, which was, what, 18 games thereabouts, um, 
So, yeah, he's been played predominantly as a forward. And I'm kind of a little bit worried about that where, you know, are we looking at the CBAs and thinking, oh, there might be a role there for him. Um, so definitely. And the flashy score of 82. Him. Exactly right. So don't know if even I'd be keen on him after his second game. No. So, yeah, 100% uh, keep an eye on him. Don't go early on him. Um, and Because every other game that he's played, this is what he scored, 27, negative 6. Don't know how, but negative 6. A 63, 43, 40, 61, 57, 45. Uh, and then an 11. And then he had a whole host of 50s, 40s beyond that. So, yeah, probably going to be one of those slow burns anyway. Um, but I don't really know if the dogs need him. Um, no. In that role. They've got so many guys that can play that small forward role. Um, so... I don't know. I don't know. But keep him on your watch list at the very least. Uh, next up, we have Lee Kalia, defender, Ooh. 123.9K. Made his way into the team off the back of Sam Taylor's horrible concussion, mm. playing his first game since 2022 after rupturing a ligament in his toe, of all things, that scuttled his entire 2023. Scored 53 first up on the weekend against the Baggers from just five disposals, two marks, four tackles. So he scored modestly more than what his stats indicate. Mm. Previously played the last four games of 2022, where he scored 14, 64, 57, and a 71 when he got into his groove. So he does show that uh, he has a bit of potential to make a bit of cash as a cash cow. Mm. The Giants have yet to announce a timeline for Taylor's return, but have said, given the severity of his, of his concussion, they are taking a conservative approach. So it may bode well for Aaliyah's job security. Clearly, he is a highly rated player having been taken with pick 15 in 2021. So it is worth waiting to see if he is selected first and foremost this week. And I guess wait to see if we can get greater clarity on Taylor's timeline. Agreed. So, yeah, it might, might be one because, I mean, we've kind of at the stage now where we need to forecast ahead and look at what rookies are available. And it's looking a little bit dire at the moment. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, and probably part of the reason why you should – no need to go early. Um because we're not having to, like last week, I went early on McAuliffe and I meant, because I thought, okay, I may have to pick up Hugo Garcia, McAuliffe and Biggie Nguyen. Mm. So um, that was part of the reason. But now with only really two on the horizon, if that, yeah, no need to go early. Yeah, agreed. Let's move on to guys on the bubble this week. And we're going to kick off with Biggie Nguyen. Yeah, just eligible. Biggie. 123.9K, break even of minus 64. He looked great in game one, scoring an 89. They managed just a 46 against the Hawks on the weekends. There are concerns uh, for his job security with both Combin taking a backline role and Dawson out. But as we saw in game, it appears that Combin, you know, most likely will be thrown forward to provide another target. So could be that could be beneficial for Nguyen, especially with Dawson set to return in a couple of weeks. Will probably be a bit of a slow burn as sort of a, a defender, um, but he can sit on the bench and make cash mm. and be cover if you do need him. I have went early on him last week just purely because there was no one else really to go to. And he's he's projected – well, he's got a break here at a negative 64, as you said, and he's projected to go up 49.6K if he can average 44. Um, and then beyond that – I think at the very least he's going to make around about 80 K you'd think. Hmm. Um, and that's, that's, that's pretty nice. So I don't think Dawson's uh, slated to return for, as you said, another two to another three weeks. Two, three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So um, might be a good thing to get him in. Hopefully he holds beyond that and um, yeah, can make some quick fire cash. Cause it's at that stage, as I said, where we need to take a little bit of a risk. And even if it's a quick in and out after a few weeks, um, pump and dump, as they say. Um, and yeah, Make that cash. Make it. Um, make it rain. Uh, next up, we have Kane McAuliffe, midfielder, priced at 117.3K with a break even of negative seven. Has played the two games, the first as the sub for a score of 16 and his second playing through the middle for a score of 58. Mm. There's a few out for the Tigers in the engine room with Toronto, Hopper and Prestia yet to return. So there's opportunity for him to play a bit more through the middle. We've seen him get CBAs with 14% in his first sub game and 43% in his last match, which is a great sign. A nice option for a midfield downgrade. Like it a lot. Um, another option for you in your midfield or your forward line is Hugo Garcia, 117.3K. Mm. 
break even of minus 45. He did manage 45 CBAs on the weekend for a score of 69. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. That's the third ding, 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 I think, of this episode. Mm. Uh, following on from the <laughs> for three, a record. Three, episode, three, three nonsenses happening. Yes. Uh, following on from 37% and a score of 43 in his first game when I believe he was played as the sub. So questions will be there about his longer term job security, but pleasing to see he didn't start as a sub on the weekend or get subbed off with Zach Jones being subbed instead. The other promising sign as potential cash cow is he does seem to have decent enough scoring potential with a knack for tackling, posting seven and nine tackles in both games and 14 and nine in his opening two games in the VFL. So like Steele, we do love a bloke that loves a cuddle for easy points. And I think Ross Lyon does too. So, mm. Mm. yep. We're all, all cuddlers. We love a good cuddle. Mm, and uh, exactly. good to see he is also a fan, uh, which bodes well for Hugo's long-term job security. Uh, next up, we have Blake Drury as a forward, 123.9K with a break-even of negative 46. Plays a tough role for a side that will struggle. As we know, Drury has a score of 78 and 39. As a small forward, he's going to have down days reflected across his vastly different first two games, kicking two goals for the 78 and one for the 39. However, the 78 is probably a little bit overinflated with 11 marks that he took, having had just three on the weekend. I think I'd prefer to go for a Garcia instead mm. of the Hugo variety. And his scoring potential seems stronger overall and has a slightly better job security than Drury. The Drury's still out. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you call him? Um, judge? judge? Judge Drury? What's the, uh, what's the slogan again? The cases, the cases are, real. are real. The people are real. <laughs> the decisions, decisions are, are final. final. This is the courtroom <laughs> of Judge Judith Scheinland. <laughs> this um, is the courtroom of Blake Drury. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't quite have the same ring. No, it doesn't. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> we're going to move on to the next one, the next guy, and it is James Tunstall, forward eligible, 123.9K, break even of minus 11. Scored 61 in his second game, returning to the side after losing his spot following his first game in round four, where he scored just 21 playing as the sub. Not someone we would consider shaky job security and scoring as a tall forward won't be anything substantial enough for a potential cash cow. So please, please pass. Please. Mm, yep, don't do it to yourself. We'll be uh, like the uh, Sharp, is it his name, from Brisbane? Mm. I was one who jumped on him. I've already forgotten. I've wiped him from memory. Jumped on him for the first game he played. Oh, sorry, the second game I think he played, and then he wasn't in the team ever again. Yeah, I think it was Sharp, yeah. That hurt. The old man Fags could do it again. Uh, but to round us out, we have Toby Conway Ruckman priced at 180K with a break even of negative 44. Has scores of 83 and 64 in his two matches. Though it should be noted, he hasn't played consecutive AFL games this year, appearing to play when Stanley is rested. So a bit of a rotating policy here. Thanks to the uh, ever reliable Scott. He who shall not be named, which I just named him. But considering he played solo with a sizable 41 hitouts, it didn't really translate to easy points as it does with most Ruckman. And uh, I guess his hitouts to advantage, they um, weren't rating highly. So um, yeah, it's probably a bit of a dent in his game. Makes him a risky option as he's at an inflated price uh, for a rookie, which hurts him for an R3 spot. Uh, yeah, especially if you've got a Naismith. Like 123.9K, you can actually fork out cash to get him in. Yeah. And he's not playing every week. So no. it's not as handy an option as I think. Uh, yeah, you're not getting that return on investment. No. I think anytime you need to fork out money in order to bring a rookie in, you kind of, it's almost like you're, you're obviously using a trade, but I reckon it's like a one 1. 1.5 trades you're, you're using. Yeah. In some respects, because you're having to, f fork out extra money, dip into your bank, which could be used to obviously, you know, upgrade and stuff down the track with other guys. So I think I'd yeah. be okay with it if he was playing every week. Yeah. Yeah. But he's not, he's not. Yeah, no consistent rule. Yeah. I just don't think, I don't think long-term it's going to be worth it. But Liam, let us move on to the next segment. We both mm. know what it is. Regular listeners, viewers of our content, they know what it is. It is, let me do the honors here. Visually, of course, using the ever-reliable prop, as you can see here on YouTube, for those people tuning in via their own ears, it is 
the captain's hat because it is I am the captain now. And for those regular viewers and listeners, they'll be familiar with the fact that in 2024, we have made the call out for people to send in their own rendition of I am the captain now. And if this is your first time tuning in, now you know. So if you're keen to be featured in our show, get to sending yours in, which of course our call was answered this week by one of our good Discord members who goes by the username Tactical Tim. Take it away, legend. Look at me. I am the captain now. <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Tim. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. I was, I was trying to, I was racking my brain. I'm like, I've heard this voice before. It's so familiar. I reckon mm. it's a blend between a bit of Arnold Schwarzenegger yes. mixed in yep. a bit of Simple Jack from Tropic oh, Thunder. I don't know if you've seen Tropic Thunder. If you haven't, go to YouTube, type in Simple Jack, and oh, it is funny. Yes. it's a bit of a slow character. You make me happy. And that's virtually what I reckon the mix is. Just put good. in a blender. That's it. I'm loving the diversity we're getting with these. Like we're getting, it's good. It's not like we've just getting ones that you know were us imitations of us. Like, yeah, exactly. Or imitations of the uh, the original. We're getting, we're mm. getting real diversity, um, real range. I want to say. What I'm what I'm waiting for next though is for someone to send it in in a different language. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be unique. Although, so there's an idea. Well, we don't. We wouldn't know if that's what they're actually saying. That is true. Although we'll use, because AI and Google Translate is pretty good. That is Going true. by the ads that I've seen uh, in recent times. Yeah, we'll give it a go. <laughs> and if someone just says something really, uh, really obscene, and then we play it through. I was, I was going to say, like, if you send it in, we will not translate it. We'll play it and translate it as we record. But that's risky because it could. We're a family-friendly show. Exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> To some extent, Are we? <laughs> we, try, we try to be. I don't know. What would the classification we board rate us? No, Do we try to not. be? No, the classification board would probably PG, uh, give us- PG, 13 plus. Uh, some parental guidance recommended. <laughs> some scared scenes may scare young viewers. <laughs> and as, as, as long as they have the disclaimer at the start with, you wouldn't steal a car, doon, doon, yeah. doon, doon, doon. <laughs> Anti piracy, Dad. You wouldn't uh, steal. And then you're like, you wouldn't steal a handbag. I love how they just go from like, you wouldn't steal a handbag to you wouldn't steal a car. Piracy is a crime. I'm pretty sure pirating a movie with I'm the captain now is is different level of, of like stealing a car. But that's just me. I don't but know. also like a handbag to a car is also a big jump. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're just like really trying to drive the point home and like scare kids. It didn't scare anyone. It just made us laugh. Uh, very funny. Anyway, we got off the tangent. So thank you again for that, Tim, yes. for your Simple Jack slash Arnold Schwarzenegger um, uh, interpretation there. Did enjoy that. So as always, as we said, if you want to feature as a guest announcer for I'm the Captain Now, the easiest way to send yours in is via our Discord. So jump on in. Uh, do so via the link. We whack up on socials. Uh, head to uh, the video here on YouTube. We'll whack it in the uh, in the comment section as well. So click the link, join up, free to do so. And um, yeah, slot into our DMs and send yours through. Otherwise, you can do so via Twitter also as well. I really want, now that I'm thinking about what I want out of these, I want mm -hmm. someone to, I'd love like a Dennis Committee. Like, oh, yes. You know, let's get some footy versions. BT. Yeah, footy. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Boys, keep the goal. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of stuff. Like, work it in. Like, how would they blend it? Like, would they, would they I don't say? Even know. I, don't, I haven't thought it this far ahead, Damon. I haven't thought this far ahead. I just. Well, well you could do it like a, like a, you know, committeeism. You could do a Bruce McAvaney yes. where, yeah. like, you know how they got the real nice catchphrases at the end yeah. of, like, grand finals and stuff. Um, Like, they've done it again, the cats. Or, you know, um. Uh, they've gone back to back to back, you know, with Hawthorne, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, yep, I'm here for this. You yep. know what? Just the the world is your oyster, everybody. Mm, it is 100. percent So we've we've laid, like. we've given you the canvas. Now's the time for you to just graffiti it. I was going to say uh, apply your artistic uh, flair, but yeah, you can do that also. But you can butcher it you if you like. Want. Yeah, yep. butcher it, do whatever you like. But anyway, in I'm mm. the captain now. We chat about. The VC and C options that we've got this coming week for of Supercoach on this coming weekend. As always, we've scrounged through the data around the top options for you to consider. And first up, we have none other than Max 
Spawn? Will he be Maxi? Will he be Maxwell? Will he be Ooh, Maximilian? Yes. Mm. Nice early DC though, sorry, for us playing on Wednesday night. He has a great average against the Tigers of 125.91 from 11 outings to go alongside his three-round average this year of 148. Consider strongly. 100%. So I just got distracted by myself because I realized that uh, Paddy's hair, our um, white cat, is on the peak of this cat. So Ooh. thank you, Paddy. Just always wanted to get involved in the podcast is Paddy. Um, but uh, yeah, Maxi, um, he's treated us nicely in recent he times. Has. And awfully tempted, awfully tempted. Uh, next up, we have Nicky Dacos has a 98.3 average against the Dons with a 145, which is his highest score against them last year in the corresponding game. Hasn't been at his lofty standards for parts of this year, though look to be back again on the weekend with a score of 133. So I reckon fair chance to back him in. Do it. Do it. Next up, we have Romo. Rowan Marshall, he has the best average versus opponent of any player this round with a 143.4 average mm-hmm. against the power what? from five outings. Get this, his lowest score from those five games is 127. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm here for this. Is so he just I'm... like, he's like Popeye and like just squeezes just... a can of spinach into his gullet and then just like Seriously. transforms into a superhuman? Just against incredible. Them. Let's. I'm just gonna just double check that I've got those stats right because it seems incredibly wrong. Um, it, it seems, yeah, a bit fanciful. But I'm gonna back you in. I'm gonna back you in. I'm gonna just do a quick career stats. Let's do it. So uh, for those people that that traded him in, that were you know a bit bummed about his down score, geez, this will put a pep in your step, won't it? All right. So his first game against him was in 2019. He scored 139. He then scored Ooh. 160. 127, what? 132, and 159. If you have him, you have to put the VC on him or the C. I don't even care. Just... And, and Port have a bit of a positive correlation as well. Um, probably uh, mid-tier, probably about fifth, sixth most mm. um, points they concede. Well, to I mean, opposition marks. he's going to be facing Soldo and potentially Sweet, depending on how they are. Uh... They'll, they'll need more than that by the sounds of it. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. Just don't even put in a ruck. I mean, what's the point? He's just going to bloody come in and score 170. So can you, it doesn't can you matter. Tag him? Can you tag him? Yes. <laughs> is it a way to apply? Willem like Drew. It? Willem Drew will just be standing <laughs> next to him at the rock contest. Put like put an anvil, attach that to his uh to his shorts so he can't jump for for hit outs. Yeah. Uh, bloody you know, hell. The Looney Tunes type scenario. Yes. But uh, next up, we have Sammy Walsh. So it has looked great since his return with a score of 166 against the Crows and followed it up with a 130 against the Giants. Faces the Cats, who he's played four times for an average of 108. But the last two times he's met met them, he scored 126 and a 158. Mm. So I do like Le Walsh El Capitano. Yep, I like that too. Next option is none other than Le Bont. Uh, coming off a score of 125 on the dot, captaincy worthy. Uh, mm-hmm. He appears to be a bit of a safe option for the C. His last three scores against the Dockers read 114, 182, and 100. So not mm. bad. Yep. But it is Bont. He bounced back nicely uh, yes, in the return game against the return to form game, I should say, against the Saints. Next up, we have Jordan Dawson. So has a great average against the Ruse with 118.3 mm-hmm. from six games. And his lowest against them is a 99. And his last three against the Ruse, Reed, 102, 145, and 134. And he's coming into this game off the back, of course, of that 168. Next up, we have Matty Rao. He's only had one score that wasn't kept to see worthy this year, a 99 against the Dogs. Otherwise, he has gone 137, 159, Sorry, 137, 155, 129, and 135. And he has an average of 120 against the Eagles from five games. That average includes, and that average of 120 includes an injured score of six. His other scores against them Ooh. are 165, 157, 101, and 171. Wow. If you have old mate Matty Rao, do it. And here I was thinking that. He was already out of reach. He's going to reach the absolute moon. 
Six forty point three k is uh, is uh, priced at the moment. Gone up sixty eight point five k. He he could reach the moon. He's going to be on the moon this time next week, Liam. As we're chatting about captains, so he's going to have to book a a, a return trip. Uh, incredible. But um, next up, we have to round us out, Isaac Heaney. So he faces the Hawks, but it is the side that he has the worst average against, which is just 78.4 with a higher score of 93. Though Heen Dog looks different this year. So if you need a Hail Mary, could be a nice one to end with. Um, different uh, different man is the reform Burr man. So um, mm. don't mind it. Um, yeah, I did, ignore his, I did ignore his previous form against the Hawks. Yeah, I think there's better options. If you've got Matty Rao and you, if you've got Romo mm. or Matty Rao, Romo BC into Matty Rao C. If Rowan Marshall scores 125, I reckon you've got to roll the dice on a Matty Rao C. <laughs> yeah, break, break our rule. Of the, the 120, like, this is probably the only time we'd say break the 125 rule. Um, um, like given the opposition, we're kind of like, yeah, like anyone that faces the Eagles, which to their credit, they've performed pretty well in recent weeks. Yeah. But, um, but given that, Plus the history. Roll the dice, as you say. Roll that dice 100%. Um, now, on to our head-to-head, Damon. In our last week, you opted for the Man of Steel while I, I went for well, blah, blah, while I went for Le Bont. I managed mm. to half the differential. Blah, blah, I can't even speak. Mm. I managed to half the differential and peg it back to two wins to three, though that is still in your favour. So we are... Uh, two wins to three, your favor, with a differential of 40 points. Now, Damon, I think I'm first up this week. You are. Mm, you are well, I mean, who are you going to go choose? for? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many. Uh, I'm going to choose Scottfather's weapon himself. Oh, you're doing Matthew it. Matthew Rowell. Matthew Rowell. Feels weird oh. saying Matthew Rowell. Yeah, who's Matthew Rowell? Um, well, for me, I'm going to just have a quick look at some defense V position. I, because I, need, to see, that, I? <laughs> I need to see ever so quickly. This is a bit of a cheat sheet. Um, uh, against the Tigs, I want to back in my man again, the big beaded one. Um, oh, do I do it or do I go for Romo? The other option I'm actually going to suggest to you. Or Walshy. While she pl- the the, uh, the the Geelong, Geelong give away the mm. most points to opposition inside mid, so I don't mind that. Yep, exactly. You know what? Stuff it and go on with my man Walshy. Let's do it. Pants off territory. They're the not other option on. that we haven't considered. Mm-hmm. Hawthorne give away the most points to opposition Ruckman. They face Grundy. Grundy faces Ooh. them. He's coming off a big score as well. So That's another great. option. I mean, it's just the last game of the round. It's the worst yeah. game to see a player in but if you again if you needed to like go hail mary yeah it's our old rule isn't it like you can't yeah, you can't put weirdest... a, a, can't get a captain in the last game i don't know it's, <laughs> anyway i don't understand it but yeah so hang on who are you going damon walshy i'm gonna go walshy i'm gonna pass up the big bearded one uh and i'll pass up romo even though it kind of speaks for itself with romo with that history mm. Um, I reckon. No, I reckon it's going to buck the trend. I reckon Romo is going to have a good game, but not a massive game. Okay. I reckon one of those two guys, either Raul or Romo, will not reach the expectations, and I think it'll be Romo. So I'm going to go for my man Walsh. I'll back him in, and I'll be dictated oh. by the numbers, considering that the uh, the Cats concede a fair few points to opposition mids. Let's do it. Let's lock it in. That is us. Lock and loaded. So, Liam, it is time now to jump into, say it with me now, Liam, together as one, three. You never do this. I know, but we'll, we'll count you it down. You never do this well. <laughs> we'll count it down. We'll count it down this time. So we're in sync. Ready? Hopefully their internet's in sync. Wait, three. Is it three? Is it we're going on one? Or? <laughs> uh, after, uh, on, after one. <laughs> right. Ready? So it's three, two, one, and then bang, and then we start. Okay, ready? And this is riveting. Three. <laughs> Two, one. I got, I got to, to know. know. Hey, I got to know. Yeah, it's not too bad. It wasn't too bad. I just slowed down close, a bit. I reckon. Yeah, that's uh, we'll, we'll we'll take that and run. Well, Liam, the first just to kick us off isn't a question, but worthy of a mention nonetheless, as we had multiple messages 
following the first game of last round between the Dogs and the Saints. You can probably guess what it is. Mm. With the first message sent to us via James Eper. Apologies if I have butchered your surname. But he brought to our attention a very unique ding ding moment. Yes. Of course, last week we had one of our followers send in a screenshot of Yo and Reed standing next to each other with their jumper numbers forming the illustrious, the all glorious 69, with the scoreboard at the same time also reading for the Eagles, dinner for 269. Well, this time, Lena, has been eclipsed. I didn't think we'd ever eclipse it. We spoke of it last week as being a once off, mm. never to be seen again, like a, a meteor just going across the skies. What's Haley's comment? How many years is that? I have no idea, but I think it's every oh, few years. It can't be. It can't be, can it? I think this is a Haley's Comet moment. Uh, so for me, Liam, I'm going to call it because James Eper, and apologies again if I'm butchering your name, he drew to our attention three Saints players in Wang. We'll call him Wang because it's funny. Wilson and Garcia scoring, you guessed it, Liam, 69. Yes. Three times over, ding, ding, ding in the matchup with the dogs. Three, Liam. Talk about a menage a trois. Tip of the cap to you, James. And he said to us, that's the only thing that the Saints are celebrating, is this menage a trois. <laughs> that's it. That is oh, it. Um, very, very good. Haley's Comet comes around every. Uh, I don't know. It- nah, it's, I was hoping it was coming every. 69 years. 69 years. <laughs> in 75 years. So we were close. Oh. Yeah, I know, right? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll round it down. Usually normally round it up, but we'll round it down in this case of 69 years. So and thank you, coming, Haley's comment. The next time coming as well, in yes. the night sky is in the year yes. 20, 60. Night? Oh. <laughs> can we can we, can we slow <laughs> it down a bit? One. Hang on, how many times? Can we slow it down? To can we send an astronaut into space and, and just somehow we'll slow, slow it down? down. Slow as chance. So yeah. Change the rotation of it, the speed of it, velocity, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, that'd be incredible. What are you checking now? I'm just saying when the next time it'll be here in the year ending 69. Okay, I'll, I'll let you look at that up while we delve into the, I'll read out the first question. Genuine question that was sent in by uh, at smart underscore swans, smart swans super coach on Twitter. And they ask, is track a good option to bring in this week? I already have Walsh and am looking for a midfielder to bring in. I know he's got a high break even, but he's playing the Tigers, who of course concede bulk points. Thank you. Well, no, thank you for your question, Smart Swans Super Coach. And I would say that of all the times to bring track in, or at least a player um, a week earlier than what I guess the break even dictates, this is the time I'd probably do it with track. Obviously, a break even of 157. Um, it, there's a projected score of 112 according to Supercoach Plus. They've got him projected going down 20.7, but has scored 141 in his last game against the Tigs. And as I referred to, the Tigs, they give away a bulk points to opposition mids, so especially those primo mids. So for that, I think it is, in this case, a semi-sensible option to be jumping on him a week earlier. I mean, at most, as I said, you might be shorting yourself 20.7, 21K, um, but I do think he's going to have a bit of a day out against the Tigs. Um, and, I mean, Oliver, he's out. Uh, he At least he was out across the bye period with surgery. Don't know if he's going to return. If he doesn't return, there's more slices of the pie there for track to feast on. So for me, I don't mind it. Liam, have you found your answer before you answer this genuine question? I have. It's, sort of, it's, it's a fair time away. <laughs> well, but we have to cryogenically freeze ourselves in order to uh, see it. Yeah, it's in the year 6698. Okay. So um, just another, uh, how many is that? It's a count. Sorry, just give me a quick. Uh, another years. 61 times before it comes. It has oh, come around geez. 61 times before it, um, yeah, we get to see it. Well, it's going to be many generations down the line, Liam. Hopefully um, they'll, um, they'll remember us. Exactly. Hopefully they're tuning back into this episode as it happens 
And they'd be like, oh, our great, 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 grandfathers were chatting about this moment. And they can be like, ding, ding, 69. If that happens. I don't know if the joke's going to run that long, but. No, I don't know whether it will either. It happens like four times in the next bloody 10,000 years. That's it. Anyway. Uh, we're probably going to be colonizing Mars by that stage, I reckon, anyway. So may, maybe given that, I don't know come if it come closer to Mars earlier than what it would. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm we're getting an into astrologer. science. Anyway, is astrology. track yep. a good option to bring in? I'll answer this question. Yeah, I don't mind it. I think he's got a high break even, but he is playing the Tigers. I'm sure. Yeah, I don't mind it. I actually really don't. I think mm. you'd think he's going to bounce back after his last game. And they kind of need to, like, they're not going yeah. badly, but you know, they need, they need to play a bit better, mm. get some form going. Yeah. So I don't mind it. You could potentially wait another week. It depends on what else you're doing with your team, I think, and what other options yeah. you've got. But yeah, I don't mind bringing him in. Yep. Yeah. I did actually consider it myself as well, but then when Walshy just shut out the lights, I was like, no, nah, I've, I've got to go for my boy. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't mind it. But Liam, that brings us to the end of a bit of an extended uh, episode this time around, probably due to the fact that we're trying to work out uh, Haley Comet's trajectory, um, speed, everything else, but uh, well worth it in the end, I think. Who knows? I think so. Uh, but before we go, where can our listeners find us across our socials? Yes, uh, you can find us on YouTube at, at, at Supercoach Edge. Don't forget to like and subscribe for this brilliant content um, on Twitter, at supercoach underscore edge, Damon at j 88 myself at at Liam Evans underscore 95. And please do message Damon whenever you see a 69. And on Facebook <laughs> and Instagram, search supercoach do edge. A group message. <laughs> so we can both share in the fun. I do giggle every single time. I do. I did like that we got, yeah, we were getting like, we're getting pinged on the week. Yeah. <laughs> every time it came up. Bulk. Bulk messages, even Adam uh, Namith as well, uh, one of our avid followers. Yes. He, have a look on YouTube in my team talk video. Every time I mentioned the, the number 69, he was time coding it and going ding, ding. That's oh, the level that we're at here. <laughs> even I had someone, it. even had someone message us talking about uh, the, I think it was Skits Fritz was talking about the percentage of coaches that were putting the player on the bench as opposed to starting them on field. And it was something like, 26.9%. And he was like, hey, ding, ding. We're, we've, we've come to, we're not at that point yet where we're, we're clutching at straws. Um, no doubt it will come a time, but yes, um, we are awake. enjoying the nonsense as it pops up. And yes. hopefully you are too. Well, let Liam round us out for round six. Must say best of luck for the upcoming round seven. Mayo Trades hit the mark with the best 22 team, of course, and your scores head towards their moon. Catch you next week. See you guys.